Hello students, welcome back to the chapter of alternating current. In the previous few modules, we have been discussing that how we can use phasor techniques to solve the questions where we have a combination of more than one circuit elements, that is an LCR circuit. That means in a circuit we have all three, the inductor, the capacitor and the resistor. So let's take the discussion further and consider an AC circuit with L, C and R as shown in this particular figure. Now let's assume that at certain instant of time the current is drawing in the clockwise direction and the potential difference across these three elements can be written as VL, VC and VR. Now, what we already know from our previous discussions is that in case of a resistor, the current and EMF are in same phase. Whereas in case of a capacitor, the current leads the EMF by pi by 2. And in case of an inductor, the current is lagging behind the EMF by pi by 2. Now, we have been discussing everything till now, taking the voltage of the source epsilon as the reference. What if we change our reference to the current? So here the noticeable thing before we move ahead is that at any particular instant, the value of EMF would be the sum of all three voltages. That means at an instant, the voltage would be ruling by the Kirchhoff's law and not by the phasor diagrams. So let's say that at any instant the current is given by I naught sin of omega t plus phi and let us continue the discussion that what happens if we take the current as our reference. Now if you take current as the reference nothing happens to the EMF for a resistor because for a resistor the EMF and the current are in same phase. But in case of a capacitor, the current actually leads the EMF and therefore we can say that EMF or the voltage actually lags behind the current and therefore in case of a capacitor we can write Vc is equal to the maximum value multiplied by sine of omega t plus pi which is same for the current minus of pi by 2 since the current leads or with respect to current the voltage lags behind. Now if we take inductor for example what we will get is that the current actually lags behind the voltage and therefore if the current is the reference then we can say that the voltage leads ahead by an angle of pi by 2 and therefore in the angle value of the sign we will get omega t plus phi plus of pi by 2. So please note here we are discussing if we take the current as the reference. In all our previous discussions we have taken the voltage as the reference. Now let's continue our discussion about this LS LCR circuit. What we can note here is that the value of phasor diagrams or the technique of phasor diagrams is well applicable for RMS voltage which can be given by the resultant of Vc minus Vl and Vr. Now to find out the maximum values we will use simply the Ohm's law which is given by V by R. So for resistance it is given by V is equal to I naught R sin of omega t plus phi. For the value of capacitor we can say that Vc is equal to I naught into Xc and the voltage actually lags behind the current by pi by 2 and in case of an inductor we can write Vl would be equal to I naught into Xl sin of omega t plus phi plus pi by 2 that means that the voltage leads the current by an angle of pi by 2 which is same as that the current lags behind the voltage by an angle of pi by 2. Now you can write down the value of current by the resultant of the 
voltages and impedance of the circuit. Let's see how it is done. Now we can write down here that epsilon naught would be the resultant of these three when we talk about the RMS value and therefore epsilon naught will be equal to under root of Vr square plus Vl minus Vc square which then can be written as I naught into R plus I naught into XL minus Xc square taking I naught common we get this particular value. And on simplification, we can write down I naught is equal to E naught by Z, which basically is what we have discussed earlier that Ohm's law is applicable on impedance. Now let's try to find out the power developed across such a circuit. We know instantaneous power is nothing but epsilon into I. Putting down the value that we have here, we'll get that it is equal to epsilon naught I naught sin of omega t multiplied by sin of omega t plus phi where phi can be found out using this particular diagram or the phasor methods that we know. P average whereas is given by ERMS into IRMS multiplied by cos phi where phi again is the angle between current and the EMF which can be found out using the phasor diagrams which in this particular case can be written as R by Z. And therefore, power factor for an LCR circuit is given by R by Z. I hope you have understood the module. We will take our discussion further in the next coming sections. Thank you.